Welcome to the Creality CR Scan Lizard User Guide video series. In this final video of the series, I'm going to show you how to 3D scan and capture this orange using the Creality Color Kit. Now, I'm no expert with the texture mapping, but I have been using it a bit, and so hopefully with this video I can explain the process. It's also worth mentioning that even with a powerful system like I have, the texture mapping process takes forever. The only success I've had with this is to do two scan layers, and even that, when it does work, can take up to 30 minutes to process. Anything more than two scan layers was pushing over an hour to the point where the software would either just crash or hang, and or it would get to 5% and never pass that point in the progress, and I'll just give up in frustration. I think there needs to be some improvement done with this particular mode, and honestly, it's a bit of fun when it works, but for the frustration and the time investment you need to put into it for average results when they do work, it's not really worth the time. But if you want to go ahead and give it a try, watch this video to see the process, and you can check the timestamps in the description of this video to jump to sections that may interest you. If you're enjoying the content and find value in it, then consider supporting my channel by going to the link in the description and buying me a coffee. Otherwise, you can just subscribe and like the video to help my channel grow. All links in the description of the video, so take a look there for additional details. And a quick note that I'm using the latest version of the program for Windows, which is 2.5.4. So enough chat, let's get into it and capture and scan this orange. To quickly go over the initial setup, first unfold the studio lighting box that is provided in the color kit and place the turntable inside. Don't be afraid of breaking it, it's very sturdy material, just pull it open and then button the sides. You don't have to use this light box, but it will help even the lighting and hide the shadows for the photo capture. Now connect the USB cable to the studio LED light strip and also connect the USB cable to the turntable. Then connect the white dongle via USB to your PC. This dongle acts as both a wire connection and also the Bluetooth connection. If using a DSLR camera, you'll need to pick the cable that suits your camera and connect it to the DSLR, and then connect the other side of the cable to the dongle. In your phone, go to the Bluetooth settings and connect to the CR Scan Lizard. In the color kit, there should be a tripod mounting plate and phone holder. You can use this to mount both the scanner and the phone to the tripod. But my advice is to mount the scanner and the phone on separate tripods if you have them available. In fact, you should have a small white tripod that comes with the scanner and then a larger tripod that comes with the color kit. So you should have two tripods to use. In my case, I like to use the small white tripod and connect that to the phone. And I also have a DSLR tripod that I can connect the scanner to. I find this way you can position the scanner in its optimal position while also placing the camera as close as you can and thus getting more detailed pictures for the texture mapping. I have only tried smaller objects like this orange and the way I do it is to sit it in one position so that it captures the top and sides but misses the bottom and then rotating it on its side so that it is capturing the side, top and bottom as it turns around. So this should capture all the angles we need. So therefore it should capture the top, bottom and the sides and give us enough recognizable features that we can then do our manual alignment from. Which is another issue I faced with objects like this orange, since it is such a symmetrical object, using the auto alignment and even the manual alignment in most cases, it can confuse the software on any geometric features to make the alignment too, and it is often incorrect. In this case, we're scanning an orange. If it has some sort of marker on it, like I like to put the sticker or leave the sticker on the side here so that I can kind of use this top nub and the bottom and the sticker as my three points of orientation. Anyway, let's get into it and it should make more sense as we go through the process. With everything set up, start the CR Studio software. Photo capture only works in the table scan mode in texture mode. So click on the table scan tab and then click on texture in the scan mode. When you do that, you should see an additional option saying use external texture mapping and you need to click on that as well to activate it. This will give you two more options via Bluetooth and via camera, which are pretty self-explanatory. But in my case, I'm taking photos with my camera via Bluetooth. So of course I click on via Bluetooth. If you have connected to Bluetooth correctly, you should see no errors. If there are any errors, they'll be up in the top left hand side here. 
Click on the preview button and position the scanner to its ideal location, which should be indicated on the left hand side here. Now in my case it says too far, but I'm right on the edge of where it's in its perfect range as well, so this is going to be what I feel the appropriate distance. Click again to stop the preview, and now we need to initialize it. We do this by removing the target object and then clicking on Initial. Give the software a moment to load and to detect the turntable. You can either let it run its course for about 10 seconds and stop on its own, or just click on Stop. You then put the target object back on the turntable. It should now be on the scan stage, so all we need to do is make sure our target object is in place, our camera is in position and turned on, and then we can click on Scan. Leave the software to run and do its thing. It takes about 20 to 30 seconds for it to do a full rotation, and then it will stop the scanning by itself. The idea is that we're going to do two scans. I find anything more than two layers will take far too long to process, well over an hour in most cases, or the computer will just crash. So we're just going to do two scans with two sets of photos. It's also a good idea to periodically just tap the screen on your phone to make sure that the camera app is still active and that the screen hasn't locked out. I forgot to do this many times and I went to shoot and of course there was no photos being taken and that means you have to delete the scan layer and do it again and it's just very frustrating. So we've checked that the camera is active, it's ready to take the photos. All we need to do now is click on the shoot button. So we'll do that and allow the software, again, another 20 to 30 seconds for it to take all the photos it needs. It's a good idea to save your project at this stage, either going to File, Save or Control S to save. Save your project and just give it a name. We're going to say Orange Texture. Now we need to do the second scan layer and as I explained earlier we need to rotate the object so it's on its side and that way we can capture the bottom in the photos as well. So I've rotated onto its side, we then click on append, we might tap on the phone again just to make sure it stays active and then we click on scan. I find the sticker helps on the side, this way we have three points to orientate when we align it because we can use the top, the bottom and the position of the sticker. When we're scanning symmetrical objects the software can easily be confused by trying to match geometric patterns to make the alignment correctly. So by putting the sticker there and knowing where the top and bottom is, we can manually align it ourselves quite easily. And then we take our next set of photos by clicking on shoot. So each object you scan is going to be different. Try and do it in two layers or two scan layers if possible. Like I said, anything more than two just takes far too long to actually process when it comes to the texture mapping. I welcome you to try yourself with another scan or another set of photos, but just be aware the processing is really does take a long time. Even with two scans, it takes my system about 20 to 30 minutes. My system is quite powerful with an i9 9900K, 32 gig of RAM, and an RTX 3080 and even that takes forever. I find that even with my system you can't have anything running in the background otherwise it will crash when you start processing the photos so I can't run Spotify or watch YouTube while I'm waiting. I pretty much just have to leave the system with nothing running in the background so that it can process those photos. With our 3D scan and photos captured we move on to the alignment and processing stages. You can try to auto align and see what results you get, but in this case I'm just going to manually align it myself as I find it faster with these kind of objects. I find objects like this because they are so symmetrical, the software gets easily confused trying to find similar geometric features and the alignment often isn't correct. So I just save myself time and do it myself manually. I have videos specifically on manual alignment, but just to go over it again in this case, what we do, first we're going to save our project to make sure we don't lose anything, and then we go up to manual alignment. I'm going to hide our table scan 1, and this is going to be our base layer that we're going to align to. With that out of the way, I can click on our second layer, enable the transform operator, hold down alt and middle mouse button to drag out of the way, and then I'm just going to hold down alt and left mouse button to try and find a similar feature. So here's our sticker, which means this must be the top and that is probably the bottom there. We can turn our first layer back on and we're just going to try and rotate this around to see where that sticker is. Okay, so there it is just there. So as you can see, this is what I mean. It can be tricky to try and align things because we know where our sticker is, but it didn't capture the top fully and it also didn't capture the bottom. 
I'm also going to click delete because it's already pre-selected the turntable and I'm just going to remove that to make it a bit easier. So if we have a look at this sticker, we might be able to align some features that are similar here, try and get it as close as we can to what they should be aligning to. So I'm going to drag the first layer into this position, click on the second layer and then click on the plus button. And this will give me my three points of orientation. So making sure the first one is selected, I can right click on here, maybe this sort of little arm area and here. So that's doesn't have to be exact, but just close enough. Click on the second one. Now I think we're going to have to go on the left hand side like here and also the left hand side. Uh, where is that? So it's sort of it's going to be in line about here. And then we're just going to have to guess we can't pick this point exactly, but we can sort of pick off it a bit. Oops, I just this is why you need to make sure you change your selection. So I'm going to go back there picking that third one and then we can pick something directly below probably about here and I can sort of see a bit of that groove just there. So about there and then we can click on a line and see what result we get. So that looks pretty good. There is a bit of mesh data missing here, but we'll see how it goes in the processing. We can turn the layer on and off and we can see it still looks quite a bit out, but for purposes of demonstration, I'm just going to have to process this and see what happens. So you click on process and allow it to uh, process our two layers. When you do the processing, make sure that texture mapping isn't selected at this stage. So once the processing is done, it's going to ask us if we want to export the data and we can just say cancel because we don't need it just yet. Uh, and then we can take a look at our scanned orange. So I think it's done a pretty good job. You can see there is some confusion here with the sticker. I can sort of see two stickers in that position, but we're just going to keep pressing forward with this and see how it goes. So again, save your work and we can now move on to the next stage, which is actually applying our texture map. All right, so now on to the texture mapping section. The first thing you need to do is to get the photos from your device, so either your phone or your DSLR camera. I'll leave that to you to figure out how your method of doing that is going to be. But as far as my method, what I have is my phone connected to my cloud storage so that photos upload to the cloud storage and then I can download the photos directly onto my PC. So that just saves me a lot of hassle trying to connect cables everywhere to my phone etc. I then like to create a folder called texture in the project folder and then I will move all the photos into that location. Back in CR Studio over on the left hand side panel down the bottom we have an icon which looks like a camera. If you hover over that it should say external texture mapping so you want to click on that and the external texture mapping window should come up. In this window, there is a line that says, please select a folder to store the texture photos. I think this should probably more read like where are the photos that you've taken located. So we do that by clicking on the three dots and then just browsing to our job folder, or at least in my case, because that's where I've saved them. And then just clicking select folder. And if you've picked the right area, you should see a list of all the photos you took. You'll also notice that the first image that you click or whichever image you click, we just need to click the first one, doesn't matter too much, but you'll see it load on the right hand side in this window. In this window, what you want to do is left mouse click and drag an area over and then we can just resize this as we need to. And what you need to do is try and capture the object in that photo, but also throughout all the other photos. Now you only need to pick the first photo, so you need to make sure that your object is within that frame at all times, because it's going to cut all the photos down to that window. This is just rotating in the spot. It shouldn't move out of frame, and that's the window size that I need. All we need to do now is click on cut. Leave it to process. It's going to cut all the images and it's going to save all those cut images in that texture folder where we saved all these photos to. Once that finishes, you should get a new window pop up saying that after the clipping, do you want to continue with the texture mapping, which may take a long time. So what it's saying here is that it's finished cutting the photos down to our window size. Do we want to proceed with the texture mapping? And if you wanted to proceed, this is where you'd click OK. I'm going to have to stop the recording at this stage because 
texture mapping is very uh, CPU intensive. And even on my machine, it's going to probably take 20 to 30 minutes and I need nothing else running in the background. So I'm going to pause the recording at this stage and click OK and then come back, hopefully when this is complete. Okay, we're back. And if you manage to get through that without crashing or locking up or whatever, you should be able to see the final textured result. And as you can probably see from the screen, this is not an orange because in my case, I waited an hour for it to process and then it was still stuck at 5% and it did not do anything and locked up the computer. So it just goes to show that this texture mapping is not very good in its current state and I'm quite frustrated with it. And all I can do is show you an example of something that looks like when it does kind of work. And you can see here's an apple I've scanned in a previous instance. It's got a pretty good result, but as you can see, there is quite a bit of texture tearing here that where it hasn't captured it very well. But apart from that, it is pretty good. Another example is this lychee, which actually came out pretty good. Uh, there's a little tiny bit of mesh dangling out there, which is also another thing that when you get your final fusion, you can't delete any of the mesh. I tried to actually delete this little piece out and then apply the texture and it throws errors straight away saying that there's some error with it and it can't complete. So don't try and delete and fill holes or anything. Just do your texture mapping straight onto the fusion result it gives you. In this case for the lychee, it was actually a pretty good result. So this example is a mango. This came out pretty good. I was really happy with the results for this one. It looked quite clean. You can see areas where the sticker are. It kind of fills in a bit of the gaps here where the sticker is sort of overlapping a bit and there is a bit of texture stretching here and here. But overall, this was a pretty good result. This was with two scans, um, a fusion, and then the textures applied. I think in this case, it took about 30 minutes to process. And then one final example, here we have a banana and I didn't go through with the texture mapping because of an issue inherent in the way that this process works. Because when you're doing table scan and you have to set it to texture mode, it's capturing things in black and white. It looks at very white, points or highlights as like elevation and very dark points as depressions. So this banana that I scanned was actually a bit of an older overripe banana and it had a lot of kind of, you know, the little brown spots that you get on banana when they get too old. And so the texturing, the, the texture mapping thought these are all kind of dimples in the surface, whereas they were just, you know, blemishes. And so I didn't go through with the texture mapping on this object because it was just going to look bad regardless. My advice from here is if you really want to try texture capture, get in and play around with it. Do two scans at the most and just see how it goes. I honestly think in its current state that texture mapping is really not worth the time investment. You're probably going to get better results texture painting by hand in something like Blender or Substance Painter, especially if you have some sort of 3D artist background where you know how to do that already. You could probably just export your model, your fused model and just texture paint it yourself straight away rather than trying to capture the texture through the photos of this software. It just isn't that great. When it does work, it can look really good, but there are always some sort of little texture stretching here or there. So you're never going to get a perfect result for the time you need to put in to try and even get a good result. And I really hope that the software creators can work on improving this area because if it did work in a process quickly, it would be a great you know, addition to these type of scanners, the, the CR scan lizard, it would really give it that little extra feature to put it ahead in the market. So that brings us to the end of the video on how to do texture mapping with the CR scan lizard. It also brings us to the end of the CR scan lizard user guide video series. It's been an amazing experience creating this video series and I've learned so much about 3D scanning. I hope that's come through and that you've learned something about it too. I will continue to create more videos around the CR Scan Lizard that might be new improvements or big changes to the software or maybe new workflows, anything like that I'll create content on. I also plan to create quick tip videos. These are going to be small bite sized content where you can just focus on one particular topic. But most of all, it's just been amazing to see the support for this channel since creating the video series and I can't thank you enough for that. Well, that's the end of the video series. So I hope you found value in it. If you have, please consider supporting me by going to the link in the description of this video and buying me a coffee through my support page. 
Otherwise, just subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thanks for watching.